Hello and welcome, I'm John Tendy. AAF, Advanced Authoring Format, is used to transfer sequence and timeline information from one media application to another. OMF, Open Media Framework, is an earlier version and it's supported by a number of applications, but AAF is the new format. It contains more information such as volume automation, uh, panning, the names of audio files, and tracks when importing or exporting from one application to another. This is important, especially the labeling. Particularly when you're doing film, when you get an AAF file, it can say hours, especially in a group project, you wouldn't think that labeling is that tedious, but it is. It's a little easier to visually find a guitar or a bass drum that isn't labeled a snare drum. The waveform has an obvious look, but it's not so easy when it's a dozen tracks of doorbells, shotgun blasts, dogs barking, women screaming. I've been there. Try it. It is not easy. So I use Persona Studio One, Adobe Premiere, sometimes Adobe Audition, and Pro Tools if necessary. The good news for me is that these applications all support AAF. So someone brought me a jazz project that was tracked in Pro Tools with film. This project is not as tedious as full-on film with Foley or sound effects. It's just a single file from beginning to end, and there are no women screaming. It's jazz. So, since I'm the one mixing it, I'm going to take advantage of AAF conversion so I can mix it in Studio One. Let's first open it up in Pro Tools. Okay, so let's open up the tune. Uh, it's called First Tune 48 because the uh, sample rate is 48K 24-bit. So here it is. You can see your layout and you can see that there are multiple takes with a few little, I don't know if they're punches or what, I haven't even listened to it yet. Now the first thing you should do, the first thing you should do in this situation, since we are going to export this as an AAF, take a couple of screenshots. You have a visual reference for the track layout and the names. That's the first thing you should do. The other thing you should do is run off a rough mix. It doesn't have to be a good mix. Uh, it can be mono, it doesn't matter. Just so you have some type of visual reference uh, and audio reference for the same reason, just in case you made a mistake. Okay, so how do we export this as an AAF? It's very simple. You're going to select every audio track. We're not gonna bother with the buses. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to export, Select tracks as new AAF OMF. You're going to get this window here. Okay, so we're going to export as AAF. We can export as OMF, but if we do that, we're going to lose the names of the labels. And the whole idea here is to keep the, the names of the labels. Enforce media composer compatibility. Why not? I'm not going to use it. Frame rate 23976 because that's the uh, frame rate of the video. Now, um, 24 frames per second is usually a nickname. It's almost always 23976. For example, if you're using a Sony VG30 or a, uh, a VG900, you'll shoot at 24, but it's really 23976. You can even open up your video in QuickTime and get information on it, and you will know that uh, it, whether it's actually true 24 or 23976. A thousand times out of a thousand one, no pun intended, it's 23976. Okay, uh, stereo, no, we're not gonna worry with the 5.1. Apply sample rate conversion, we're not gonna need to do that because the source is 48 and we're going to be mixing at 48. Uh, but you can apply sample rate conversion uh, and there's a lot there. The source, you would choose the source and you would choose the destination. Okay, we're not gonna bother with that. Format AIF, fine. Bit depth 24, consolidate from source media, best idea, there might be a, you know, a, a handle on each side that's 10 or 15 seconds long. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about the handles. What's there is there. I'm gonna put that at zero. Um, if you were to say have crossfades uh, in this session, I don't see any, then you would wanna have a handle size of about 1,000 milliseconds, which is one second. So you can uh, reconfigure those fades if you want to. That's not the case here. This is just a straight audio print. It's that simple. Okay, so now you click OK. Uh, the sequence name, uh, first tune 48, we're gonna go AAF, so we don't confuse it with the other one. Comments, um, export, it doesn't really matter. Export for video. Uh, let's say 23976, why not? And there you have it. Now, where are we gonna save it? Let's just save it to the same folder for now. You're gonna have to do a little file management after you do, do this uh, uh, conversion. Uh, there's always gonna be some screwy things, so you're gonna sort through the folder, do a little file, file management, and neat things up. So I'm just gonna, for now, stick it all in the same folder. Uh, and then the converted audio files, uh, will go in the same folder as the AAF. Now, you're gonna see that the names are kind of screwy 
Uh, they're not actual names. They're kind of just a jumble of letters with .aif at the end. Don't worry about that. When these files show up in your converted session in Studio One or whichever workstation you choose to use, um, it will all make sense. It will be the same labels. So this whole process should take about 40 seconds, which is pretty amazing. And we're done. That's it. I'm going to save this just for the hell of it. Let's close this session. Let's quit. Now, the next step is to open it in Studio One. So let's open Studio One. Let's launch it. Okay, so what we're going to do in Studio One is we're going to create a new song. An empty song. Uh, now remember that we did it uh, in, in 48. We didn't have to convert it. It already was 48. It's going to be 24-bit. Uh, and that's really all you need to know. In our session setup, we can... Uh, Confirm the time code. Now look at this. Watch how easy this is. In the open window, you find your AAF export, and all you do is just drop it into your edit window. Now look at this. Let's squeeze that in. Look at that. Everything is laid out exactly the same. If there were crossfades, which there are not, uh, we would have had those handles taken care of, but that's it. The whole thing is set up. Now there were a few interleaved files. Let's see. Let's go to our mixer. And those were converted to um, uh, separate stereo files, left and right. Okay, so all I'm going to have to do is drag that to the left and right. That's it. It's no big deal. I'm mixing from scratch anyway. Now, you can see all the levels are the same because the session that I uh, uh, exported from had no volume data. Had there been volume data, it would have uh, also um, uh, converted and would have been sent into this session. So that's really it. Now I can continue to work and do a mix from scratch, a fresh mix, in the DAW of my choice. You know, we got to come up with a new acronym. I, I never liked saying DAW, but this is fantastic. So maybe you have an immediate need for AAF conversion. That's probably why you click this video. But if you don't, you eventually will. It's coming. And by the way, film is coming to your production room too. At least the inquiries will. This is 2019. And if you think you're going to continue making a living in an audio-only environment, you're wrong. Get some books, go to YouTube University, make yourself familiar with this process now. Don't wait for the job to come in so that your producer can sit there watching you fumble around like an idiot. Learn Premiere Pro, learn Final Cut Pro X, yes, both of them. And whichever destination you choose as your audio mix environment, make sure that it is AAF friendly. Now, while I clearly prefer to work in a Personas environment, I have a working up-to-date copy of Pro Tools. And of course, I use it from time to time. If someone brings me a Pro Tools project, that's in mid-production, of course, I'll continue with Pro Tools. To start from scratch would be ridiculous. And if you're hired as a freelance engineer, obviously, be prepared to track in the workstation of your producer's choice. But if someone is coming to me for full production or for final mix, and they ask me, could you do it in Pro Tools? I'll say, you know what? I'd prefer to do it in Studio One. And you might be thinking, you know, you got to make the customer happy. you got to make the client happy and give them what they want. And to a point, that's true. But to make the customer happy, there are two ethics above all. Do a great job and do it in the least amount of hours. This project came to me specifically because the client likes my work. So if you're going to stumble around in an unfamiliar environment, midway you're going to hit some problems. And once you've painted yourself into a corner, you can't paint yourself out. You're going to have to cut a hole in the wall. So it makes sense to work in the environment you know best. In your production room, choose your workstation and stick with it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Check out Tendi Media on Facebook for more videos and live music performances. I'm John Tendi. Thank you for watching.